All right, Galatians chapter 5. Good things happened at camp. We had six kids make a decision for Christ. Isn't that fantastic? That is so good. And, and our youth ministry is going to help them now to grow in that faith and to secure those decisions. And so that's good. Uh, Tommy Martin uh, got a call. If you remember Tanner Wilson, uh, Tanner had some really bad stuff with his grandmother and grandfather. And at the last minute, he called and Tommy just jumped in his car and went over there to preach for him. So we're kind of scattered this morning, but be praying for Tommy. He's not used to preaching all the time. And so I pray for him and then just different stuff going on. But we're so glad that our, our youth had a great time at camp. And so now begin to listen this morning. You know, if you've made a decision for Christ, then follow it up and see what God has to say to you every day and every Sunday. So Galatians chapter 5 this morning. Galatians chapter 5, just a couple of verses in Galatians 5, 1 and 13. And then we'll go for one verse in the book of Proverbs. And uh, I want you to see something pretty incredible this morning out of the scripture. This week we celebrated our birthday of our country and that's a great thing and we love our country I do I appreciate it so much but we always have to remember we have never been perfect just like all have sinned and come short of the glory of God well every nation has made mistakes and we have made mistakes and one of the horrible mistakes we made years ago was that we allowed slavery in our country and that was a horrible mistake and it was part of the cause of the civil war and people died and and blacks were oppressed, and so some horrible things happened. But as bad as that was, let me tell you, there is a worse slavery than the kind we had in the Deep South before 1865. There's a worse kind of slavery, and it is spiritual slavery. And in the, before the Civil War, there was a group of people who were enslaved, but... Before Jesus, all of us were enslaved. And the good news is this, that as bad as our slavery was, we're all enslaved to sin, held captive by the devil. But the good news is this, that Jesus has come to set us free. And not only does he set us free, but also he wants us to stay free. We're not slaves anymore to sin or to the devil. We're not slaves anymore anymore. Now, but he wants us to live as free men and not like spiritual slaves. And here's what I want you to hear this morning. There's a lot of people here and you have come to know Jesus and you've been born again. He's begun to work in your life. But sometimes we drift back over into slavery where we do not need to be. We're going to talk about that this morning with some very specific applications. Galatians 5.1. It's, Galatians is the epistle of freedom. God's telling us how free in Christ we can be. Verse 1 of chapter 5. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. He has set us free. Don't go back and live like you're a slave. And then in verse 13. You were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. In other words, do not let the flesh get hold of you again and make you a slave. Now, there's two parts to these two verses this morning. The first part is this. We've been set free. As Christians, if you're a Christian, we've been set free. And we are to stay free. So let's look at the text. First of all, set free. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Verse 13, you were called to freedom. Now, what is he talking about? He's not talking about politics, okay? It, you know, some people in communist countries, they're basically political slaves, and it's not a good thing. That's not what he's talking about here. He's not talking about the kind of slavery that we had in the Deep South before the Civil War, although... Uh, Christianity had an effect of undoing that kind of slavery. That's not what he's talking about. What he's talking about is our spiritual freedom. Before Christ, we were slaves. And he said, oh, I was never a slave. Well, the Bible says you were. John 8, Jesus says, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. 
Romans 6, 6 says when we come to Christ, you are no longer slaves to sin. But what that means is you were. Galatians 4, 7 says the same thing. You're no longer a slave. You used to be, but you're no longer a slave, but now a son adopt, forgiven and adopted into the family of God. So what he's saying is that we had a mess. We were in, in, in a bad place. We were slaves, and, and the devil causes us to do all kinds of horrible things, our, our bad things that we learned. We were enslaved to a lot of things. And the glory of the gospel is this, that Jesus comes to set us free. I want to tell you today, folks, no matter what you're into, no matter what you have done, no matter where you have been, you may have done the worst things in the world, you can be free from that through Jesus Christ. It is a glorious truth. No matter how much debt to sin you owed, Jesus came, died on the cross for us, rose from the dead, calls us to himself. And when we respond to his call, yes, Jesus, I was a mess, but I received the salvation that you want to give, like maybe six young people did at camp this last week. When that happens, then we are set free. And we're not on the road to hell anymore. We're on the road to heaven. It is a glorious, glorious thing. And let me just stop right here and say this. If you have never Receive Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. Then all the rest of this is not going to make any difference to you. You have to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. All of us need Jesus. And Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. God so loved the world that he gave his son. And this morning, the invitation goes out to each and every person here. You're, se you're seated this morning in that nice, comfortable chair. And you're just, you know, you're kind of there and maybe you're listening some. But, he, but here's the truth. The Holy Spirit may be knocking at the door of your heart, urging you to come to Jesus Christ. And if that is happening to you, don't even wait for the end of the message. Just right where you sit, right at this moment, just call out to Jesus. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And you call out to him and say, Jesus, I have been a mess, but I thank you that you did a miracle on the cross. I thank you that even though I was a sinner, you still loved me. You died for me. And I want to be right with you. I want to be right with God. I want to go to heaven. I want to have my sins forgiven. I want to be part of the family of God. And he doesn't turn us away. And maybe right now at your seat, right where you are, you can cry out to the Lord. And God will set you free. Man, I get paid to tell people about this. This is, this is a good deal. I got the best job in the whole world. I get to tell people how they can go to heaven, be forgiven. What a job. It's great. You can be set free. But here's the second part, and the main thing I want to emphasize this morning, is that we are to stay free. God does not want any of us to be enslaved to anything. Look at the second part of both these verses. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Died on the cross, set us free when we came to him. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. Don't go back. Don't, Jesus set you free. Don't live like a slave. Verse 13, same thing. You were called to freedom. Jesus called us to freedom by the cross. You were called to freedom. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. Don't, don't be doing those things that the lower nature calls you to do. All the sinful things. That, because you'll be enslaved to it again. Do not do that. So you've been set free. Now stay free. And that's important for us to hear. Because dear people, many things can enslave us. There's all kinds of things that want to wrap their chains around you and make you a slave. And God says, oh, that's not where I want you to be. Jesus doesn't want anybody to be a slave. Stay free. But sometimes we don't pay attention until we get enslaved again. Like number one, by our addictions. We get enslaved to an addiction. Maybe it's a porn addiction that is so easy. I'm so... Glad we didn't have computers and cell phones when I was a teenage boy. Man, that would have been hard. 
A lot of people get addicted. Jesus can set you free. Don't, don't drift back into that. Some of us get addicted to chemical. I mean, we're, we're, ta we're taking drugs or we're taking a prescription drug or we're into alcohol and we get addicted to that and it enslaves us. It wraps chains around us and ruins our lives. Don't, don't let that happen to you. Or, or sometimes it's food. Sometimes... We're not addicted to porn. We're not addicted to pills. But man, we're addicted to donuts. And bluebell. And all that kind of stuff. And, and if that isn't... Now, God created food for us to eat, okay? That, that's great. God, and even to enjoy. But if it controls your life, you become a slave. I mean, do you ever fast? If food controls us, we're a slave. So... We want to, no addictions should enslave us. Second, no emotions should enslave us. Are you under the grip of your temper? And your temper, you're going along and something happens to you and you just erupt like a volcano. And you spew lava on everybody around you. And it's horrible the things you do and say and... It's got that temper. It's, it's bad emotions. That needs to be, you're addicted. If that's addicting and, and you're, you're controlled by that, you need to get free from it. Don't be enslaved to that bad emotions. It's jealousy. Some people are so jealous. You know, they've got a new this and I don't have a new that. And I, I hate it that they have it and I don't have it. I'm so jealous. That's a horrible emotion. And that kind of thing can wrap itself around you. Depression can be like that. And I, some depression is, is chemically induced and, you know, people get their medicine straightened out and they're okay, they don't have it. But some of, our, some of our depression is just because we're not walking close to the Lord and it's helping to mess us up. Don't let that enslave you. So addictions and, em and emotions and unforgiveness. Oh, I hope there's nobody here. I hope, but I doubt it. I hope there's nobody here that's still carrying a grudge from years ago. Something happened to you or you thought something happened to you and it made you upset and, and you've been holding a grudge ever since then and you're not going to release it. And that grudge, that unforgiveness has wrapped itself all around you. So now you're, you're a slave to it and it controls you. That's not where God wants us to be. So, so if any of those things going on in your life, you've come to Jesus, you've been set free, but then you begin to get back into it, you're getting enslaved again. It's not like you're about to die and go to hell, but you're messing up your life. God doesn't want that to happen. And then here's the one I really want to talk about this morning, okay? I really want to just stop for a moment and bear down on this one because some of us, have gotten ourselves in financial debt and we become a slave economically. I, after the first service, I was praying with people. People were coming up to me and saying, man, I've got that problem. Pray for me. I'm dealing with this. Pray for me. Very, very common problem. 75% of the people in our country have some kind of debt. 66%, that's two-thirds, Live paycheck to paycheck. That means there's not anything left over. I mean, just paycheck to paycheck. And 50% of the people in this country have credit card debt. Now, if you've got credit card debt, that's a bad deal because check the interest rate on that thing. I mean, it can be horrible. And so what happens is we start, you know, we're wanting and we're wanting and wanting all this stuff. We start getting it. We start using that credit card. We start taking out loans all this kind of stuff, and pretty soon, we are a slave financially. Now, you say, well, Pastor, I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, it's the American way to borrow money and live with a credit card and all that kind of thing. That's just the American way. No, I, I, I don't think that's the biblical way. It may be the American way. Because Proverbs 22.7 says this. You know 22.6, the verse right above this, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know that verse. But the very next verse says, the rich rules over the poor, and get this, 
And the borrower becomes the lender's slave. It's not me, folks. That's the Bible. The borrower becomes the lender's slave. That literally happened in Old Testament times. They would get in debt. Maybe something bad would happen. They would get in debt. And then they would borrow some money. And the, the Old Testament does not forbid borrowing. It does forbid high interest, okay? And it does forbid walking away from your debts. It says that the, the wicked borrows and does not pay back. And so the Bible says that. And then it gives us a warning. It says, be careful with debt because it can make you a slave. And that's where a lot of people have gotten in our day. They're in slavery. Got way more house they can afford, way more cars they can afford. They eat out all the time, can't really afford it, maxed out all the credit cards. And now they're, they're panicking. They can't sleep at night. They toss and turn because how are we going to pay the bills? Creditors are calling and contacting them all the time, driving them crazy. They're, it's just a horrible way to live. God wants them to do something, and they can't do it because they, they don't, they're not able. We saw... A couple of weeks ago, what are we supposed to do with God's money? Remember? Number one, we're to use some of it for our own bills. Number two, we're to save some. And number three, we're to give some. And a lot of people say, there is no way I can save and there's no way I can give because everything I've got goes to my bills and my debt and I'm totally trapped. This is what happens to young people sometimes. We have a great college ministry here, and some of these uh, students get called to ministry, and, and they want to go. Man, they, they feel called to missions. Well, if you're going to go to missions, you need some seminary. And they say, well, I can't go to seminary because I got $40,000 worth of student loans already, and I'm a slave to my debt. Or God's calling you in the ministry. God wants you to be a pastor or some minister of some kind. And you need, again, to get some training or whatever. I can't do that because I'm so much in debt. I'm enslaved to my debt. I've got to get out. God wants us to get out. And he never wants us to get in. He never wants us to be those people that are wrapped chains, financial chains wrapped all around us that are choking the life out of us. And we're not able to do, you know, we're walking down the street and and here's some really need, or maybe you hear about it in church, and, and some need, somebody needs some help, and you want to give, but you can't, because all your credit cards are maxed out, and you don't have a penny left over. You become a slave. And God doesn't want us to be a slave to anything. Now, if you're here today, and you're in slavery, okay, maxed out the credit cards, all kinds of things, you got to weigh all these payments, not enough money to make the payments, that's where you are. I want to share with you this morning how you can get out. Because that's what I want people to do. I don't want you to be controlled by your temper. I don't want you to be controlled by an addiction. I don't want you to be controlled by debt. I don't want you to be a slave to it. I want you to be free. So here's what God says. You're, you're here today. You know, Pastor, that's me. I'm in, I'm in debt prison. I owe all kinds of money. That's me. How do I get out? Okay, here's what we do. It's not a 12-step program, but four, okay? Just four, real quickly, because I'm going to run out of time. Number one, if you're in debt and you want to get out, stop digging the hole deeper. Maybe you're here today and you say, boy, I would like to get out of debt. Man, we're, ah, we're just so much into it. It's wrapped all around us. Pastor Steve preached about getting out. Don't let it be a slave. Man, I was so convicted. Now the sermon's over. Where do you want to go eat out? <laughs> we got one credit card left. It's not maxed, you know. We could go eat. Stop digging the hole deeper. That's what gets us in trouble. We're already in debt, and then we just, well, we just keep on. Just keep on digging. Stop. God can help you stop. You're going home today. You pull up to your house. You didn't go out to eat, okay? You're going to go in and have beans and cornbread, okay? You didn't go out to eat. And, the, and that big van is pulling up in front of your house. 
You know which one I'm talking about, the one that comes by every day and delivers something, you know? They're coming by today, they're going to deliver something, you're already in debt. What you need to do is run up there and grab that package and take it back. Say, no, 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 please, you take it. I can't afford it. Stop digging. My wife tells me, I don't know anything about this, I, but she tells me that you can sit on your couch. You don't even have to go to a store anymore. You just sit on your couch and dig yourself deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in debt. Just sitting on the couch. Hide that phone. Do something. I don't know what you're going to have to do. But stop digging the hole deeper. Ask God for help. Second, you're trying to get out. You don't want to be a slave anymore. And I know some of you, you're, you're saying, this does not apply to me at all. Yeah, yeah, it does too. Because before you know it, you know, they're going to be sending you credit card applications and all kinds of things. So you got to be careful too. But here's another. Ask God to show you the real root cause of the problem. Now, dear people, we can ask the question, why are we so much in debt? And we say, well, it's because we spend too much money. Yes, but why? Why do we spend money that we don't have? A lot of reasons. Number one, we're discontent. See, we live in this house, but it's not good enough. We need a bigger, better one. Or we got a car, but it's not good enough. I'm discontent. And, we, and so because we're discontent, we go out and get something else that we can't afford. Listen, here's the secret for all of us to learn. Paul was in prison. He was in prison in Rome, and he wrote to the Philippians. And you know what he said? He said, I've learned to be content in all things. I'm in prison. I don't have anything, but that's okay. I'm in content in Christ. Or if, if, I'm, if I'm rich or if I'm poor, if I'm abased or I'm abounding, got a lot or got a little, I've learned to be content. Because the secret is knowing Christ and I know him and I can be content. We've got to ask God to help us be content. So here's the second problem. Some people are so insecure. They're so insecure. And they pull up at a red light and they see somebody and they're driving a used car that's got a lot of years and miles on it. And right next to and this guy pulls up and he got this beautiful brand new vehicle, whatever. And you look over there and you say, oh, I feel like nothing compared to that person, you know. Or maybe ladies, you know, your friends all have nicer clothes than you and they wear these brand new nice all the trendy fashions, whatever that is, the holes in the jeans are just in the right places, you know. And, and you see all that and, and you say, oh, I, I feel so bad because the holes in my jeans are not in the right places. And, <laughs> and i got to have new clothes. I don't have any money, but I've got to because I'm so insecure. I, I'm just insecure. Other people have all this and I don't have it. You know what? We've got to ask God, oh God, heal this. Help me to be so secure in you. I don't have to max out my credit cards. I don't have to do all that. My, my, my good is in you. You are what I really care about. Or some of us are impatient. This is what gets people in debt. Okay, you're all going to need to hear this. Student loan debt. We got a lot of college students. I mean, they're up to here with their student loans. Don't, don't go there. Don't go there. People go off to college and they say, well, I've got to have student loans. And if I don't, I can't pay the, the tuition and the books. Okay, if you're going to use it for tuition books, maybe. But then we start, you know, i got this loan and I might as well live in the best apartment and I might as well eat out all the time and I might as well do all these other things that I really can't afford, but I can get student loans. And so then you get out of college and you're going to get a job making 40000 a year, but you owe 60000 in student loans and want somebody else to pay it. Bad, bad, bad mistake. We're so impatient. We've got to have it now. This is the way my parents are living, and I want to live like that too. But folks, they've been working for 30 years to get there. You're not going to get there overnight. Ask God to give you patience. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience. Ask God to give you patience so you don't think you have to have everything right this moment. All these things are root causes. And we have to say, oh God, heal me on the inside. I keep getting myself in slavery to 
money because I'm sick on the inside and I need to be healed. Heal discontentment. Heal insecurity. Heal impatience. Heal materialism. Oh, God, help me. Third, some people are going to have to take some drastic action. Now, there's some people here, and you're a little bit in debt. You know, you tighten up the belt some. You make a few good decisions. In a while, you're going to work your way out of debt, okay? And I praise God that you can do that, and I'm praying for you to do it. But other people have dug the hole so deep. It's going to take drastic action for you to get out. Now, before you do either one of these two things that I'm going to suggest, make sure you talk with somebody that knows more about finances than you do. If you're in a horrible mess, you probably don't know much about finances. But talk to somebody that knows all about this and give you some really good advice. We have people in our church that can do it, okay? And then here's what you may have to do. To, to not be a slave, here's what you may have to do. Number one, you may have to downsize your house. The biggest expense people have is their house. Now, houses are usually a good investment, okay? And a lot of people in our church that sell houses, real estate, usually a very good investment. But folks, if you can't make the payment, it's not a good decision. Or... If you can make the payment, but you don't have any money for anything else, probably not a good decision. You may need to downsize. Now, interest rates are high right now, so that's why you need to talk to somebody who knows what's going on. But you may have to do something drastic. You may have to change cars. You may have this ride, and you really love it, and it's really expensive, and every month after you pay the payment, I mean, there's nothing left. But it's nice. And you look good at the red light. Okay. You may need to get you a car that you can really afford. I mean, if that's taken everything you have, it's no sin to drive a used vehicle. Whatever it takes to get you out of slavery. If you're, if you're addicted to pornography, I'm going to encourage you, oh, be drastic to get out. If you're... If you're addicted to your anger and it's just ruining your life, I'm going to say, let's do whatever we have to do to get out. And if you're addicted financially and you're up to here and you can just barely swim and it takes something desperate to get out, do it. Here's the fourth thing. Look to, After you've done these others, okay, you stop digging the hole, you've asked God to heal you on the inside, maybe you've had to take some drastic action, finally look to God for a miracle. Now, I'm not asking, I'm not saying that God's going to rain silver dollars on your head, okay? But God can still do miracles in your life. Number one, he can change your thinking. Number two, he can change your heart. Number three, he can change your habits. And he can help you. He can teach you some things about finances that you don't know. And then, when you're trying to please him and you're honoring him, you're trying to live for him... And you're doing a great job at work. You may get a promotion. You may get a raise. That's going to help. God may teach you some ways to make better use of your money so it's not all gone every month when the month's over. And we can cry out to God. If you're here today and you feel convicted, I am a slave, man. I've maxed these credit cards out. I feel... Repent. Call up to God. Oh, Lord God, I have made a horrible mistake. I am sorry, God. Please help. And God wants to help his children. We come before him and we've we got sin problems. We've got financial problems. We've got health problems. Whatever we've got. We look up to him. We cry out to him. Oh, Jesus, help me. And God is a father who loves his people. And wants to help his people. And whatever you're struggling with. Whatever you're going through. God wants to help his people. And sometimes he's waiting. He's just waiting for you to ask. And I just want to move in your life in such incredible ways. I want to turn you around. I want to make you more and more like Jesus. Just waiting for you to ask. And we call out to him. And there's no telling what can happen. 
even a miracle might happen for us. So two questions as we close. Number one, do you know for certain that Jesus has come into your life and he has set you free? You're not a slave anymore. You're a son, a son or daughter of God. Do you know that for sure? If not, I would love to talk with you. There's going to be one of our ministers at the back. There'll be a couple of us at the front. We'd love to talk to you about that. That's important. But also, maybe you're here and say, I am a Christian, but oh, I'm letting myself get enslaved. I'm addicted to this. I'm depressed about this. I'm broke. I need God's help. Would you pray with me? We would love to. Maybe you're here and you need to be baptized. There's some students who went to camp. Maybe they need to be baptized this morning. Maybe you need to join our church like one lady did this morning. Maybe you just need some prayer. We're here for you. Let us help if we can. Let's stand together all over this room. We're going to sing in just a moment. We're going to sing, but I want to pray for us first. Father God, I thank you that you love every person in this room. And Lord, even when we mess up and even when we get off and get addicted or or we get... uh, affected by our emotions or get ourselves in debt or whatever you still love us and you don't want to throw us away you want to help us and so we pray Lord God for all the people in this room that we will listen to you and do what you want us to do Father we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us we can make progress in all these areas and we ask this morning that we can do that. So help us, we pray. We we recognize we cannot, certainly can't save ourselves and probably can't get ourselves free to all these slavery issues unless you help. But we ask you to this morning and we pray for it in Jesus' name.